I'm so glad that you came to be with me today. I really enjoy being with you all. It makes my day extra special. Okay, so I'm really glad you're here because we have another visit from our friend Amazon John. Remember that guy? He talked about bugs one time. If you, if you tuned in, you might've seen that. Um, and this time he's talking about animals from the North Pole. Animals from way far up north where it's very, very, very cold. I'm interested to learn, aren't you? All right, let's do our marmalade and jam chant. Ready? Get the beat. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quietly as we can. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loudly as we can. Hello! Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as high as we can. Oh, Ooh, that was squeaky. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slowly as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as we can. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna stop now because without further ado, I bring you my friend and your friend, Amazon John. Oh, hi everyone, <laughs> you caught me. I'm hanging out here with my good friend, Chad. Chad is an African spurred by tortoise. <laughs> he lives in Africa and he is just a baby. At only 15 years old, he weighs about 40 pounds now, but just wait, he could grow to be over 400 pounds. He lives in the deserts of Africa and he has always wanted a hippopotamus for Christmas. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> Both tortoises and hippos live in Africa. <laughs> and uh, where they live, it never snows. These are two animals that do not like winter. Hey, now that it's December, I'm so excited because I love winter. Do you like the holidays? Are you getting excited? Do you like winter? <gasps> Who likes making snowmen or women? Just shake that snow. Who likes making snow angels? Who likes making snowballs? And then throwing them at your favorite librarian. Hey, I've met a lot of librarians over the years and they know how to throw a snowball. They've got a good arm, so be careful if you throw a snowball at a librarian. And uh, I love winter. Animals are just like us. Some of them like winter, but some of them don't. When it gets cold outside, Chad, he has to come inside, just like at the zoo. You won't see him in winter, but I bring him inside and Hey, I was just getting ready to read him his favorite story. It's by my favorite author, Jan Brett. We're about to get cozy. <laughs> maybe you've read the mitten. <laughs> or maybe you would rather read about snow and winter. <laughs> or maybe you want to read about reindeer. <laughs> hey, speaking of reindeer, one of my favorite books, it's not a Jan Brett book, it's by Berta and Elmer Hader, and they wrote The Reindeer Trail. It's the story of how the Inuit people came to have reindeer. I know what you're thinking, Inuit, he looks like an Eskimo. Well, they don't really like the name Eskimo. The native people of Alaska, they prefer to be called Inuit. That's their name, the Inuit people. 
Hey, wait a second. I haven't even told you my name yet. I'm Jingle John, <laughs> and you are here live at the Silly Safari Studios. That's right. You used to see an Amazon John. He is my identical twin brother. I'm the cuter one. <laughs> hey, that's not funny. Why are you laughing? <laughs> but I live way up north where it's so cold and where animals love winter. You might notice that just in this book and some of even our favorite Jan Brett books that I'm dressed like a Scandinavian reindeer herder. Yeah, Scandinavia. Places like uh, Finland and Iceland and, and Norway. Places where they keep reindeer. Reindeer are kept all around the Arctic Circle and reindeer love winter. Hey, you know what I thought would be fun? How about we play a game? Some animals like winter, just like us. Some animals don't. How about I show you more animals and you help me figure out if they like winter. Does that sound like fun? Yay. Okay, let's go. Hey, everybody. Let's find out if this next animal likes winter. And I think his name is a total dead giveaway. I have with me today the one and only Snowshoe Hare. <laughs> Snow Shoe Hare. Check it out. My favorite thing about the Snowshoe Hare is his long, soft, beautiful white fur. Everyone look at the Snowshoe Hare. Soft, white fur. Hi. What color is the bunny? He's, he's brown. You caught me. Okay, let's be honest. Is this really a snowshoe hare? No, this is just my pet bunny. Same as this little guy. <laughs> Check it out, everybody. This one has soft white fur. People ask me all the time. They say, Jingle John, what's the difference between a hare and a rabbit. Well, the difference is a snowshoe hare lives by itself and they are ginormous. They would take up this whole table almost. Bunny rabbits are smaller and they live in friendly groups. So that's why these two get along. They're brother and sister. <laughs> and here's the thing. The snowshoe hare is an amazing animal. If you were to come inside the Arctic Circle in July, the ground is a slushy, mushy, muddy brown. What color is the snowshoe hair? Brown, so he can hide in the mud. And if you were to come visit us way up north now that it's winter time, the snowshoe hair grows a long outer white coat so he can hide in the snow. And he has to hide because there are wolves out there. Ah! There are foxes. Whoa! There are coyotes. Oh no! And all of those animals would love to eat the snowshoe hare. So the snowshoe hare grows a long outer white coat. One of the very few mammals that can do that. You know, mammals, unlike the tortoise, which is a reptile, scales, cold-blooded, lays eggs, the bunny rabbit is a mammal, fur, nice and warm. And do bunny rabbits lay eggs? Yes, they do chocolate ones. Okay, that's a different holiday and a different time of the year. They don't lay eggs. Bunny rabbits give birth to live baby bunnies and not so much in wintertime because there's not enough food. So the bunny rabbits hunker down and they wait to the warmer weather, which brings their favorite food grasses, leaves, clover, stuff like that. And way up north, the snowshoe hair all winter long is soft and white, same as the Arctic fox. In fact, there are even birds up in the Arctic Circle that change their color with the seasons. That's right, the rock ptarmigan. <laughs> the ptarmigan in the spring summertime has brown feathers, but as winter comes close by, he molts, he sheds, we call it. He changes his feathers to soft, fluffy white so he can hide in the snow. That's called a ptarmigan. You've never heard of a ptarmigan? Oh, he's like a grouse. Oh, you've never heard of a grouse? 
Hmm. He's like a prairie chicken. I know you like chicken. <laughs> 11 herbs and spices. <laughs> and don't worry, your librarian can't help you find the rock Patarmigan. Oh, wait a second. I'm not saying that right. Patarmigan. It's spelled with a P, but the P is silent. <laughs> You're so smart, librarians. You just say Tarmigan. The P is silent. Like pee in swimming pool. <laughs> The ptarmigan changes colors, the arctic fox, <laughs> and so does the snowshoe hare. These are little bunny rabbits. And if this were a snowshoe hare, his hind feet would be ginormous, the size of your hand. Look at your hands, everyone. <laughs> little hands would be the size of a snowshoe hare with fur sticking out every which way between the toes snowshoes so they don't sink in the snow when they're trying to outrun something that would eat them <laughs> does the snowshoe hair like winter you bet they do where they live it's practically winter all the time i am so excited to introduce you guys to hoosier <laughs> this is a eurasian eagle owl i know you're thinking he looks like a great horned owl. Well, a great horned owl is the one that you have in your backyard called a great horned owl because uh, of these feather tufts on top of his head. They look like horns, but they're not horns. They're not even antlers. They're just feather tufts. They're not even his ears. His ears are little holes on the side of his head. But the Eurasian eagle owl lives in Europe and Asia in the arctic circle and he's totally covered with feathers <laughs> he's got feathers that go all the way out to his great big wings uh, whoa did you see that this bird has great big wings wow <laughs> and do feathers keep you warm they do is hoosier <laughs> Warm-blooded or cold-blooded? He's warm-blooded, that's right. So feathers keep him warm. And where he lives inside the Arctic Circle, way up north, he has to be able to find food. The wings, uh, oh wow, aren't the only thing he has that's big. Look at those eyes. <laughs> His eyes are huge. His eyes are so big, he can't move his eye. Oh wow. He can't move his eyes. <laughs> so what does he do? Turn his head. Because he has to see food all around him. Way up north, there's not a lot of food. I mean, the Arctic Circle is basically a frozen desert. I know, when I say desert, you think hot and sandy. But the tundra, the frozen ice and snow, doesn't have any water. Because it's all ice and snow. Deserts are dry. And in the cold, frozen desert... This guy has to find mice and rats, and his favorite food would be lemmings. Not lemons. That's gross. <laughs> lemmings are like a guinea pig rodent type of animal. And if he sees a lemming from far, far away, he just swoops down. And the owl has totally silent flight. Oh, it's true. When he flaps his wings, uh, would you stop doing that? I'm talking to my friends. Sorry, everybody. I was saying, when he flaps, hit his, oh, his, his, you could hear that. He has phenomenal hearing and totally silent flight. So he can swoop down and grab his food with his talons. Those great big claws. And once he's grabbed his food, He's going to eat it up with his great big beak right there. I know you're talking. <laughs> this little wee. It's his baby feed me sound. Hoosier has lived with us for, gosh, over, over 16, 17 years. He came to live with us when he was just four weeks old. And who feeds him every night? Me. Because here at Silly Sparks, I take care of him. But out there in the cold Mostly winter of the Arctic Circle, he has to hunt on his own. See the food, sneak up on the food, grab the food, and then eat his food. And owls 
like winter. In your backyard, you've got ducks and geese and chickadees and cardinals and crows and, and blue jays. All of those birds like winter. But does every bird like winter? No. Where are the hummingbirds today? You saw them all spring and summer drinking nectar from a flower. But are there any flowers outside in winter? Not in Indiana. So the hummingbird flies south. Where does he go? Kentucky? No. He goes all the way south. Maybe even Florida or even farther south. Mexico, Central America, where he can find flowers. Hummingbirds need nectar. So they don't fly south because it's cold. They fly south so they can find food. And do all birds fly south? No. You're going to see owls and hawks and falcons in your yard all winter long. But uh, some birds fly south, some birds don't. Some birds like winter and some birds don't. <laughs> Everybody say goodbye Hoosier. <laughs> goodbye Hoosier. Try not to, you know, you know, wave your flappity things. <laughs> I said flappity things. <laughs> I know. Aren't you glad I didn't say wings? Uh, you tricked me. Hey, look who's back, right here in studio with this next animal, but this next animal does not have scales. He does not have fur. He does not even have feathers because this next animal is covered with slime. Cause it's a tree frog. <laughs> look at that everybody. This is what we call a white tree frog and it's probably one of your most common pet frogs here in the United States. This guy actually in the wild would live in Australia right in the rainforest but you have tree frogs right here in Indiana in your very own backyard. We call them peepers. Indiana peepers. <laughs> they're not much bigger than your thumb and they're brown and they hide in the bark of a tree. Now here's the thing. Do tree frogs like winter? Does slime keep you warm? No. <laughs> a frog, a toad, a salamander, they are what we call amphibians because they start off out of their egg in the water and they wind up on the land and the slime does not keep them warm. They are cold-blooded, just like a reptile, <laughs> and they don't like winter. Do you think this guy would be happy if I took him outside and set him down in the snow? No, oh, he would freeze right to the ground. It would be like sticking your tongue to a flagpole. Don't do it! It'll stick right to the pole. I've seen it on TV. <laughs> you knew the tree frogs didn't like winter because when you went to your library for summer reading, on your way home at night, you could hear the tree frogs singing all night long here in Indiana. Now, if you go outside tonight, now that it's winter, are you gonna hear any frogs singing? No, it will truly be a silent night because what are all the tree frogs doing now? They're hibernating, that's right, hibernating. How many of you wish you could hibernate? A long winter's nap, we make it sound so good, don't we? <laughs> I'll tell you something, hibernation, it's not like sleeping. It's actually more like dying. Oh, I know, I know, that doesn't sound very jolly, but let me explain. When you, oh wow, I can feel my heartbeat. Everybody, take your hand and feel your heartbeat. <laughs> it's beating, boom, 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 boom. Even when you sleep, your heart keeps you alive all night long. But when you hibernate, those tree frogs out there in Indiana when it freezes, and even farther up north in Michigan and Canada and all the way up into the Arctic Circle, those tree frogs are frozen right to the side of the tree, frozen almost. You want to know something amazing about a tree frog? Their blood has just enough salt, just enough sugar in it, it doesn't freeze. It's like antifreeze. And their heart beats once or maybe twice a minute. 
just enough to keep this guy alive until the warm weather returns, until the bugs come back. You know, animals don't hibernate because it's cold. They hibernate because they run out of food. And in springtime, the tree frogs in your backyard, they spring back to life <laughs> because there's food for them. <laughs> now in the rainforest, a frog doesn't have to hibernate because every day is the same. But when you live with seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall, your life is gonna change throughout the whole year. Does this guy like winter? He does not. Tell me if this next animal does. We've seen a lot of animals, so let's review. Does the tortoise like winter? No. But the snowshoe hare does. Does the frog? No. Some birds do, but some birds don't. See what I mean? Every animal's different. Every animal's special. But there is one animal that lives for winter. And I think you know what I'm talking about. I am talking about a real live moose. <laughs> this is a moose. Uh, hello, people. Don't moose and have great big antlers. Okay, you caught me. This is my dog. But his name is Moose. <laughs> Who's got a dog at home? Yay. Now, raise your hand if your dog loves winter. Yay! Who has a dog that loves to play in the snow? <laughs> Moose here does. So does Aidy, his bestest friend. Some dogs love the snow. Who has a dog that hates to go out when it's cold? Yeah, I have those too. Those cute little Mexican chihuahuas. <gasps> I mean chihuahuas. <laughs> Sorry teachers, I'm hooked on phonics. <laughs> Some dogs like winter. And some dogs don't. Moose here, he loves winter. And you know what else he loves? Muffins. Do you know what happens if you give a moose a muffin? Oh, yeah. Oh, trust me. It's a slippery slope. I used to have this pig. I could never make pancakes. Had this mouse once. Really liked cookies. <laughs> anyway, we all love reading. And we all love animals. And I know that a great Dane, <laughs> he likes to play in the snow. But there is another animal that I want you to meet, and I'm so excited. In fact, I have a sneaky suspicion that this is the reason why you guys are all watching right now. You're waiting to see the one animal that loves winter more than any other. And I think you're going to like her. She's... Hey, hey, everybody, it's me, Jingle John, and look, a real live reindeer. Everyone, this is... Belle. We named her Belle because Belle means beautiful and you heard me right. She is a reindeer. She is a girl and she has antlers. These are not horns. Cows have horns. Goats have horns. Unicorns have horns. Hey, I thought that cows wore bells. Why do cows wear bells? Because their horns don't work. Meep meep. I'm an elf. Hey, if you want to know what the difference is between antlers and horns, it's like, oh, look at your fingernails. Those are horns. Hey, horns are made out of the same stuff and they're warm and there's a blood flow at the base. See, because horns are living tissue. Antlers are not. See, they were when they were growing, but now they're in hard antler, not living tissue. In fact, look what Belle did last week. She broke off a part of her antler. She did that fighting with her sister. Do you guys ever fight with your brothers and sisters? Yeah, not a good idea. But with reindeer, that's what they use to push each other around. Reindeer and caribou are the only deer where females get the antlers too. And male reindeer, they drop their antlers before the end of the year. Yeah, the females keep theirs through March almost because if they see something sticking out of the tundra, or something good to eat, she will run over and push the boys out of the way. She has to eat first and she has to eat most because she's eating for two. We think that Belle is pregnant right now with what would be her second calf here on the farm. So antlers are very important. <laughs> That's right. And these antlers also 
allow her to protect herself against something that might try to hurt her, like a wolf ah! or a fox. Whoa! Or maybe even a coyote. Can you think of any other animals that might want to chase a reindeer? Badger, wolverine, maybe a mountain lion or a polar bear. I suppose all of those are happening, but really what they worry more about than anything else would be that wolf. And they can run so fast across the frozen tundra with those crazy reindeer feet. Look at those feet. <laughs> they can run so fast, it almost looks like they're flying. But hey, do reindeer fly? Yes, they do if you give them magic corn. <laughs> okay, I don't have magic corn, but I have seen reindeer fly when they need to jump over a slow moving creek or over a fallen tree or a snow bank. If something's chasing them, they can move fast and they always stay together as a group. Even if they're swimming, that's right, reindeer can swim. These feet are amazing. Sometimes they have to swim across a big creek or river or pond as they move with people like me, north and south throughout the year. Wild caribou are excellent swimmers and yet they can still stay warm in the water. Reindeer are amazing. And what can help a reindeer stay nice and warm? their fur. Do you see that nose? Look at her nose, everybody. You got to see this up close. It is what we call a fully furred nose. <laughs> reindeer live where it's so cold, they are the only deer that has a fully furred nose. Even a moose has a bare spot of a wet nose, not reindeer. They live where it's so cold, they have to have a fully furred nose. That's fun to say. Fully furred nose. Hey, I have an idea. I'll count to three. And when I get to three, I want to hear all of you say three times very fast, fully furred nose. Are you ready? Here we go. Take a deep Arctic breath. Oh, on three. Here we go. One, two, three. Fully furred nose, fully furred nose, 43rd toe. Who said that? Okay, it was me. I guess I have to practice some more. <laughs> but one thing reindeer don't have to practice is surviving way up north where it is oh so cold. Her fully fur nose, her antlers, her feet, but it's this soft coat of fur. Her winter coat that helps her stay nice and warm way up north. What color is Belle? White with brown spots. But what color was Sven in the movie? all brown. When we think caribou, we think wild and we think all brown. Here on the farm, Belle is what we call a pinto. I've got some brown ones on the farm too, but I just think Belle is so beautiful. And this winter coat, it's going to shed out in the summertime, spring and summer, and she's going to grow it all over again, just like she does her antlers every year. You're getting excited, aren't you? Because it's getting dark <laughs> here on the farm. The sun is going down. But if you were to go to the Arctic Circle any time in the winter, you don't even see the sun. You think the days are getting shorter here now that it's almost winter. Well, way up north in July, sun shines all day long. In December, the sun doesn't even come up. Life is very different way up inside the Arctic Circle. And yet reindeer, they know how to survive. You are so amazing. <laughs> and you know what you guys all get for being so great? Reindeer kisses. Mm. Kiss the reindeer. And if you can't always travel, guess what? You don't have to go to the Arctic Circle. You can visit your local library and make sure that when you do, you say hi to your favorite librarian. Librarians are all on the nice list. And you know what? You are on the nice list too. So thanks for joining us everybody live from Silly Safari Studios. It's me, Jingle John, and I have had so much fun sharing with you animals of the Arctic Circle. You keep reading, keep smiling, and have a fantastic, wonderful holiday season. We love you everyone. Goodbye. Wow. That was a real reindeer, like an actual real one. Did you think maybe they were just pretend animals? I know there was a time that I thought they weren't real, but they are, they're actual animals. And the library has some informational books about them. 
You can find all of our nonfiction books upstairs on the third floor in our library. In other branches of the library, they're in an area marked nonfiction. And instead of having the author's name, they just have numbers. If you need help, you know what you can do? Ask a librarian. Those librarians are there just to help you find the books you're interested in looking for. These books are all about animals that live where it's very, very cold. Have you ever seen any of these animals? Did you notice that several animals that live where it's cold are white? Why do you think that is? Hmm. Interesting thoughts. I think it's because it snows a lot where it's very cold. And that way, these animals are white. They can blend in or camouflage in the snow. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming today and visiting with Amazon John. And now let's do our goodbye song. Ready? Stomp, stomp, stomp your feet. Stomp your feet together. Stomp, stomp, stomp your feet. Stomp your feet together. Nod, nod, nod your head. Nod your head together. Nod, nod, nod your head. Nod your head together. Wave, wave, wave goodbye. Wave goodbye together. Wave, wave, wave goodbye. Wave goodbye together. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you come back again. I'd love to see you again. Adios, Saichin, and arrivederci. Bye-bye.